All right, well, let's see how this goes. I'll just talk you through a little bit of my process as I figure out a little logo animation. First, hop into the webs and find the Apple logo. And what we're looking for is the Apple logo as a PNG. Now I'm using the Apple logo as an example. Long press, once you find a logo that you like and you wanna use, and uh, click add to photos. Cool, so now that we've downloaded the Apple logo, let's pop up to here and insert a photo and grab our Apple logo, scale it down, throw it in the middle. Now, let's set up our layers a bit so we can get things ready for this animation. So first thing we're gonna do is duplicate this. Um, this guy is gonna be our guide. I'm gonna rename that layer guide. And this layer is going to be renamed logo. I'm gonna create a layer on top, rename this color. And I'm gonna rename another layer drips. So, almost have things set up um, for this animation. First thing I need to point out though is that our timeline is currently showing each of these layers as a different frame of our animation. With Procreate, what we can do is we can lock this guide layer as a background so that it's locked just like the background color is. And we do that by tapping down here, hitting background, and then we're gonna group all of these layers together as our first frame. And now that they're grouped together, the animation timeline views this group as one frame. And so if I end up duplicating that, we've got another frame. But I wanna change my colors. I want the logo to end up being white and the background to be black. So first thing you'll notice is you can't really see where the Apple logo is supposed to be. You can kind of see a little bit of a hair of the logo there. Um, but as we animate, I'm just going to bring down the transparency or the opacity of the logo within our frames because I want to be able to see where the logo is supposed to be. And so if we can bring down the, bring down the transparency um, if we can bring down the opacity, you can see through to our guide, which is always gonna be there. Next thing we need to do is make sure this color layer is a clipping mask. Tap on that, grab clipping mask, and that way everything that happens in this layer will be applied to what's on this layer and not outside of what's on that layer. So I'll take white because right now the logo is black blending in with the background. And if I draw, you'll see that you only see things within that layer, even though if it's not a clipping mask, it's all outside. But I turn it back to a clipping mask, and now it's all within this logo. And that's gonna be us revealing, um, let's clear it, revealing this logo. So if you do some cool drips, make sure you bring that all together, you'll see that it's revealing the logo. And if the guide wasn't there, that's what it would look like. Cool? So let's just move on through things. Let's clear this because I'm gonna do this after I do the drips. So before I start drawing all the drops, because I have this all set up really nicely, I'm just going to duplicate these frames a couple times. We're taking quite a bit of time just setting things up, um, but that way it'll speed things up in the long run. So let's draw our first drip right here. Let's go to our next frame. One thing I haven't mentioned is onion skins. And even though we're on our next frame, we can still see the previous frame. And so I don't need onion skins to be on max. Let's set our onion skins to be three, which means we can see like three frames back. While we're at it, let's also set our frame rate to 12 frames per second. You go slower than that, things get a little bit choppy. 
um, you go faster than that and you're just kind of animating frames you don't need to um, not necessarily you don't need to 24 frames per second is super smooth uh, but you've got to be really precise and so 12 frames per second is a nice middle ground things still look relatively smooth but you're not animating a kazillion frames all right let's get to the fun stuff let's go to our second frame maybe this drop is right about here and then third frame this drop oops i didn't select the layer but it'll just open it up for you um, if you don't select the layer and as we do this we kind of want to try to keep the volume of these drips relatively the same. All right, that looks pretty decent. If you're too much of a perfectionist, sometimes it just takes way too long and you have to remember that things are moving and people don't notice all the little imperfections. So you can really just speed through things and I'm a little bit I'm being a little bit too uh, too picky with some of my drawings here all right so now that it's hit we're gonna have the color start to bleed across the Apple logo so next frame up we start to see a little bit of color and remember these are all clipping masks so it's only gonna apply to the logo um, beneath it where that logo is so we start to see a little bit of color. Next frame. Oops. One thing you'll notice is if you don't connect the line as you're painting the color in, you're gonna end up painting the entire screen, right? Because even though this is a clipping mask, it's still its own layer. So what you need to do is complete this line, even though you can't really see it. So I'll show you on the next one. We'll turn this back into a clipping mask. And let's go to this one. We'll bring the drips down a little bit. Some parts are lagging behind other parts and we can always fill in a little bit later. And then we need to complete that color section. And I missed a little bit here um, so that it doesn't paint the entire screen. It only paints within this area. Next frame. Boom. Okay, let's see what that looks like right now. Cool, that's looking pretty sweet. Let's make sure that this is not filled in. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's watch it without the guide so you can see what's happening. I'll show you a little bit of a time lapse of that whole process. Just added a couple details, um, a little bit of a, a splash or splatter going on. And then as the drip comes out of the body of the apple, um, added a little bit of a detail of the liquidness and drips coming off of that color droplet. 
and then as it comes around it hits the leaf and obviously that needs a bit of a splatter too so added a bit of splatter there and that's it the last thing you need to do is turn off your guides if your guides are still on and then for all of these logo layers remember we turn them to 90 percent so you could see through them and see where the guide was so we need to go back through all of the layers and it doesn't take too long turn them back from 90 percent to 100 percent opacity cool well there you have it that's the logo animation of this apple logo and you can use your logo to do any sort of simple little liquid animation like this and i'll catch you in the next one